Hello and welcome to a video on Olber's Paradox, which is part of the IB syllabus as well as the A-level syllabus. So what we're going to look at in this video is um, the assumptions of Newton's model of the universe and how that led to a paradox which was first voiced by Christian Olbers. So the model that Newton and his contemporaries drew up was one of a static universe made by God. It wasn't changing, it was completely static, nothing was moving, it was eternal, it had always been there, it was infinite in all directions, so spatially it didn't have a limit, and it was uniform, it was homogeneous. Wherever you looked in the, in the universe, whichever point you picked, you would see the same thing. The density of stars would be the same, etc. Okay, so these, these um, assumptions were what Olbers had to work with. And it drew up a really very surprising logical paradox when you looked at the consequences of these assumptions. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at. And the paradox was that if these four assumptions are correct, then the sky would never be dark. The sky at all times, day and night, would be as bright as the surface of a star. So we're going to look at the reasoning that led to that conclusion in this video. <clears throat> so if we assume that the universe is static, it's infinite, and it's uniform, then wherever you look, eventually there will be a star along your line of sight because it's uniform and therefore every patch of sky contains the same sort of density of stars for as long as you as you care to 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 look in terms of the spatial dimensions so if you look in a particular direction your line of sight will ultimately land on a star and it's a bit like being in a very dense wood which is why we've got this picture down here so if you look at this picture carefully you can't see the edge of the wood you can't see what's beyond it wherever you look your line of sight ends on a tree there is a tree in every di every single direction no matter how small you make the differences in the in the in the angles and that's a bit like newton's universe there would always be a star eventually no matter how far away it was along your line of sight which kind of makes the night sky look like this because here are all the stars at different distances. The light from them is reaching your eye. No matter where you look, your line of sight will end on a star. And therefore, the night sky will be full of stars. And I hear you say, hang on a minute. These stars are very distant over here. All right, so the, the light from these stars won't be as bright. So let's, ha let's examine that. And that's actually true because um, the light from each star would would decrease as 1 over r squared because the intensity of the light depends on the square of the distance. It's an inverse square law. So the light arriving at our eyes or telescopes on Earth would decrease as 1 over r squared. But if we examine the fact that the universe is, is uniform a little bit more closely, we can see that at every given distance, the number of stars at that, at that particular distance would increase with the square of the distance, r squared. All right, so we've got one factor that decreases with r squared and one factor that increases as r squared. And those two factors, the intensity of the light reaching us from a particular star and the number of stars at that distance would cancel each other out and therefore the total amount of light received from any point in the sky would be constant. So let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail and see why that's true. <clears throat> so here we have two layers of stars. All right, we have star layer B, which is closer to the Earth. Obviously, this is not to scale. And we have star layer A, which is further away. Now, the surface area of these spheres, which is effectively what these layers are, they're spheres like layers of an onion around the Earth. The... Um, the number of stars here depends on the surface area. Now the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So you can see that the, the number of stars on that surface, assuming it's uniform, depends on r squared. And here we have um, the bread buttering machine. Okay, We have the inverse square law, where as you increase the distance, the intensity of the light decreases by d squared. Okay, so the intensity 
if you remember, is equal to the power or the luminosity of the star divided by 4 pi r or d squared, all right, where r or, r or d is the distance to the star. So this one we've got r squared, and this one we've got 1 over r squared. So the logic is that if you've got x number of stars per square meter, and if this is constant, which it would have to be if the universe is uniform, the number of stars at a given distance r would increase with r squared. So the number of, the, of stars is proportional to r squared. The brightness is proportional to 1 over r squared. Okay, so it, it's actually equal to the luminosity divided by 4 pi r squared. Um, but if we assume that the, the luminosity on average is L, then all, L is also proportional to R squared. So L is proportional to R squared, but the brightness is proportional to 1 over R squared. But what we're interested in is the brightness of the sky. So the brightness is proportional to L over R squared, ignoring the 4 pi. But if L is proportional to R squared, then the brightness is proportional to R squared over R squared, i.e., the brightness of the sky is constant. So the brightness of any point, and every single point in the sky contains a star eventually, um, if the universe is infinite, if the universe is uniform, and if the universe is eternal, and that's really important because it means that where, wherever the star is, it will have had an infinite amount of time to reach our eyes, and therefore there's no you can ignore the time delay of light as it as it arrives from the earth. The, the light from all the stars in the universe has had time to reach um, our our eyes, even though the the universe is infinite. And therefore, the entire sky logically should be as bright as the surface of a star. Now, clearly, the sky is not as bright as the surface of a star. So, what's this? What's the resolution to Olber's paradox? Well, the resolution to Olber's paradox is not to do with the logic. The logic is faultless. The resolution is to do with the assumptions. And as we know now, Newton's model of the universe was completely wrong. And as Hubble um, showed in the 20th century, the universe is not static. Okay, It's not stationary in space. It's expanding at rapid rates. And therefore, this, this first assumption is incorrect. So is the universe eternal? Well, current models show that at least our portion of the universe um, is not eternal. It was formed about 13.7 billion years ago. And therefore, this assumption about the universe being eternal and having existed forever is also false. Is the universe infinite? No, we don't think it is. So there is a finite distance to the edge of the universe. Um, and as the universe expands, that, that distance gets bigger, gets bigger, but it's not infinite. And so this one is also incorrect. Um, is the universe um, uniform? Well, on the grand scale of things, it is roughly, roughly uniform, and we, 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 can, we can accept that assumption. But all three of the other assumptions are completely wrong. And so that's the, uh, that's the, the, the way out of Olber's paradox. So the sky is not bright at night because the universe is not static, not eternal, and not infinite. So that's Olber's paradox. Thank you very much.